and welcome back to my channel. If you didn't see the disclaimer at the beginning, this video is going to be very sassy and contain adult language. So if you have little ones around, now is the time to put in your headphones because Stephanie's, Stephanie's going. I'm channeling my Southern sisters because I, I need your strength right now. And I, I, I need, I need the power of Texas right now. So if you are lucky enough not to know who Tanya Gold is, she is someone who wrote a very incendiary and frankly morally wrong article opinion piece for the Daily Telegraph. Uh, if you don't know, or not the te Daily Telegraph, just uh, which is a newspaper in the UK and the whole reason she wrote this article was under the guise of, under the auspices of being worried about women's health. What sparked off her rage writing was that she saw a plus size mannequin in the London store. Hold on, let me make sure I don't have lipstick in my teeth because I'm gonna be raging with lipstick in my teeth. No, okay, good. No lipstick in the teeth, okay. So she saw a plus size mannequin in the London Nike Town store. Now it was the, I think the first time they've ever had plus size mannequins in their store. And she goes on in the article to talk about and describe this mannequin as like not someone who's going for a run in her new shiny Nike gear, but someone who's heaving with fat and who's probably pre-diabetic and on their way to a hip replacement. She can't run, which is ridiculous. There are plenty of people who are fat and run and are not pre-diabetic and are not. I'm pretty fat. Like I'm, I'm pretty, I'm a big person. Like I weigh 269 pounds and I'm five feet tall and I'm not ashamed of my weight. Like it is what it is. And like, if I want to work on my health, that's my business. But one, I'm a full blown diabetic and nowhere need in near of a hip replacement. Two, I don't even take medication for my diabetes because I don't need it because I control it with exercise and diet and three what <laughs> what are you talking about like you're insane uh so she has, I have I have so many questions I have questions and I have some notes here so that's why I have my iPad in front of me because I have notes so question number one is I, I have these questions for Tanya so her name is Tanya Gold why does a visibly plus size representation bother you so much, Tanya? Why is it that just admitting that there are fat people and fat women, oh my God, in the world, why does that bother you so much? She is saying that there's a cynicism on the part of Nike, as in somehow it's a nefarious plot that Nike is acknowledging that there's plus size women. And I think what she's trying to, she the, the dots she was trying to connect was that if Nike shows plus size women, it's saying it's okay to be plus size and therefore plus size women will buy Nike and then like feel empowered and then like feel good about themselves. And like, what are you worried is going to happen is my question. Cause like nobody goes to a Nike store to buy like $50 leggings, which are amazing by the way. And like, go to eat ice cream in them. And like, and even if you do, like that's your business, there are plenty of skinny people who buy Lululemon just to go eat frozen yogurt. So whatever, like what, why are you not talking about those people? And like, it's just this idea that somehow athleticism and sports and everything is only for a certain kind of person. And that's simply not true. And it's not okay to have this terrible backlash and this like disgust for people who are different than you. Like that's insane. It's insane to say that because you don't look, because I don't look the way you want me to look, I'm not allowed to be seen or represented in a store. How do you know that a little girl who's 12, 13, 14, who's, you know, maybe a little overweight goes into Nike and sees something that like, you know, kind of looks like her. And then she realizes like, oh, I belong here too. It's okay for me to be in this space. Because as someone who grew up with the exact opposite, most malls, like 
never had anything for me. It wasn't until Lane Bryant and Torrid came along. I remember when Torrid started. Like, there was nothing for teenage girls who were overweight in a mall, except for maybe Lane Bryant, but that was like really more for your mom. There was nothing for me as a kid. And there especially wasn't anything for me in like the sports section. There was no way. I had to always buy like men's sweatpants for PE and stuff like that. I never was able to find anything cute or sporty in my size. And it's still a struggle to find that. So what you're saying is, is that you don't believe plus size people belong in this sphere, in this realm. Maybe that's not what you intended to say, but that's what it's coming off as. Number two, wouldn't being more size inclusive make Nike stores, sports and athletics in general more accessible to plus size people? So kind of like hitting on what I just said, like wouldn't that move people towards fitness? Like wouldn't it, I, I'm not understanding why you think representation equals like someone saying, oh no, it's okay to eat Reese's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, what? Like, nobody's saying that that's healthy. Like, no one's saying that. But you have to meet people where they are. And there's literally nothing wrong with being overweight and being into fitness. Now, there might be a lot of reasons why somebody's overweight. They might be dealing with mental health issues. They might be dealing with hormonal issues. They might be dealing with a whole bunch of stuff. Or I just really like vegan junk food, Tanya. Get off me. Like, ugh, screw you. And number three, do you have superpowers that like the rest of us don't know about? Like you have x-ray vision? Like you can see into the person, or in this case, into the mannequin who's not a person and is just a hum hunk of plastic? Uh, which, by the way, not that's not my observation. That's Loe Lane's, and I'm going to link her video down below because she did a really good job kind of addressing Tanya Gold's letter point by point. Um, I am just like, I will put up a picture or I will link the article down below so you can read it. Like they're on my Instagram. I like screenshotted, uh, the thing that Katie Serino has. And the thing is the whole article is behind a paywall. And I, so I didn't read the entire article, but I did watch Loie's video where she, she did read the entire article and kind of explained what she was, you know, what she was trying to get at. But all of the points that I have still stand like it doesn't even without reading the entire thing like her initial like even the little like excerpt they had like none of it stands up to scrutiny like why would someone bigger than a size 10 have to be a diabetic so in the article she says that the mannequin is like not a size uh, I don't know whatever the UK size version of like 12 or 10 is you know, they're not, you know, a hefty size, but not one to kill a woman. And then she goes on to say the mannequin's like bigger than that and like has to be a diabetic or pre-diabetic or whatever. It's like, you can't look at someone and just know that they're a diabetic. Like, is there a correlation between weight and diabetes? Yes, but not every fat person gets diabetes and not every person who has diabetes is fat. Not, it, not even every person who has type 2 diabetes is fat. And so... I think that it's a little disingenuous to be like, oh, like, yes, is it a commonly accepted correlation? Yeah, sure, but you don't know that. And even if you do, like I said, I'm a diabetic and like I'm perfectly healthy. There's nothing wrong with me, except that I am someone who has to kind of watch my fat intake and make sure that like I exercise enough and, you know, do and there's certain things I need to do, but as long as I do those things, I am perfectly fine. So here's the thing, Miss Tanya, I don't think that you give a damn about plus size health or mental health or anything. I, I don't think you care about this community at all. I don't think you care about women at all. What I think you care about is sensationalism and expanding your profile. I had never heard of you before this egregious word vomit that the Telegraph decided to print for who knows why. The thing is, what you're advocating is that plus size visibility is wrong. What you are saying is that because a person is large, they don't deserve to be seen, that they don't deserve respect and representation. 
you're insinuating that the mere sight of a large body is dangerous. And that in and of itself is a dangerous idea. We exist, ma'am. We exist. We're out in the world. We're not going to go into a fat closet and starve ourselves until we meet some fat phobic standard that you have. That's not the way the world works. We're going to continue to be out in the world and be the amazing men and women that we've always been. And you know what? If you don't like it, too damn bad. It's just too damn bad for you, isn't it? It's just too damn bad. We're not going to apologize for who we are. We're not going to apologize for what we look like. Because the thing is, we're just because we're people that you don't find attractive doesn't mean that you get to erase our entire humanity. You don't get to do that. And no matter my size, I'm a person and who deserves respect and representation. Your toxic beliefs have no power here. They have none. And the thing is, after this video, I will never say your name again. We will never talk about you. We will continue to fight against your horrible ideas that just because I'm not someone you want to sleep with, that I'm not worthy. Like you are feeding into the patriarchal idea that if you are a woman who someone doesn't want to sleep with, then you have no value. That's insane. It's insanity to think that. We are allowed to take up space in the world. We are allowed to exist for our own reasons. We're allowed to be fat. We're allowed to be just as fat as men get. Men get fat all the time and no one seems to give a damn about that. <sighs> oh, oh, no matter my size, I'm a person who deserves respect and representation. Everyone deserves respect and representation in this world. As long as you aren't advocating harming others or the erasure of others, then you deserve to be heard and be seen. You deserve to be treated like a human being. I'm not asking you to endorse my love of vegan ice cream. If you were really concerned about people's health, if you were truly only concerned about that, you would be applauding the idea of an athletics company allowing larger people to be part of the community, to feel included. Because then, even if it's not about losing weight, it's about getting out and being part of a, an athletics community, being part of a fitness community, and being part of what is naturally an intimidating, like a lot of people are afraid to go to gyms. A lot of people are afraid to even walk into a Nike store because they know that there's not gonna be anything there for them, even though Nike's carried plus sizes for a long time. So are you mad that they're just showcasing that they, cater to plus size people, that's who they are. They're an inclusive brand. They've had a campaign for years that says, if you have a body, you're an athlete. And I applaud them for that. So way to go Nike. But Tanya, you can kiss my fat ass. Take your time. There's a lot of it.